After last week's video, the open source computer science degree, I think now is a better time than any to talk about the importance of a portfolio. And in this video, we're going to go over how I optimized my portfolio when I was looking for a job. In this video, when I talk about portfolio, of course, we're going to be discussing what we go over on this channel, and that is a software development portfolio. However, a lot of these principles that I talk about in this video apply to any type of portfolio in any other industry, whether that be photography, videography, design, or whatever else you'd need to show off your creative portfolio. For starters, it doesn't matter how you obtained your education if you can't back it up. It doesn't matter if you use the curriculum that I put together for the open source computer science degree. It doesn't matter if you actually went to a school for a computer science degree. And it doesn't matter if you learn coding on some type of online platform like Skillshare. That was a very nice segue into Skillshare as a sponsor of this video. And for those of you watching who are learning to code or trying to turn your coding hobby into some type of freelance business, that's why you need to build a portfolio, I would highly recommend going into the top link of my description and getting two months of Skillshare for free because only the first 500 people who sign up to Skillshare using that link will get those two free months. Seriously, if you're thinking about turning your coding hobby into a business, I would highly recommend some of these courses that have to do with actual business, marketing yourself, freelancing as a whole, because if you wanna take your coding hobby from A to Z, where you can actually make some money doing it, these are the things you need to learn. And even if you miss out on the two months free, if you sign up for an annual plan, Skillshare is less than $10 a month. For all the information that is available on that platform, it's well worth it. And as for the kind folks over at Skillshare, I appreciate y'all supporting what we do over here on the channel and sponsoring this video. But regardless of how you learn software development, one thing holds true. You need to prove that you can actually write code. And sure, computer science degrees do help you open doors that would otherwise be shut. But once you open up that door, you need to be able to walk in. And in order to walk in, you need to prove your skills. You need to prove that you are able to do what they need you to do. Something that I like to say is that uh, if you look for a job and you don't have a portfolio, then you're probably not good enough. Because if you don't have a portfolio, then you don't have any work to show off. If you don't have any work to show off, then how have you learned? Like, what have you done? How, why do I believe that you know how to code? I mean, like, to put, put in layman's terms, what if I was hanging out with you? We went over to Virginia Beach Oceanfront, and I said, hey, look at that, look at the Hilton. It's like 31 stories tall. Look at the Hilton. I bet you I could jump off that building, and I could fly. I could fly, I could soar right over the beach into the ocean, hop on a surfboard, catch a wave in, do an aerial flip, done. Well, well, let me tell you, if you were a normal human being like me, you'd look at me and say that I'm one crazy wow. but you'd say, bet, try it. Try to jump off that, try to do all that. And I said, what do you mean try it? I don't need to try it, you, you, you should believe me. Like, why, I don't need to prove to you that I can do that. I mean, I said I could do that, right? So of course I can. It's the same idea of going in somewhere saying, okay, well, uh, on my resume, I said I can, you know, I, I do Java work. I, you know, I'm familiar with Spring. I work in Eclipse. I've taken all of these computer science courses. But have you actually done any work? Where are your examples? Like, what? The, like, have you even built anything in school? That can be part of your portfolio, some of your school projects. But what have you also worked on on your own? Like, if there's no portfolio to show off this work, then you essentially have no work. Then you essentially have no skills. Or at least that's, that's what a potential employer would think because you're not showing off anything that you can do. So to fix that, let's put together a portfolio. Now, the best way to do that is to hop on over to GitHub so I can show you how I did it. So here we have my profile page on GitHub. Uh, GitHub.com slash night by the way. About to break 700 followers for some reason or another even though I'm not very active but uh thank you anyway there are a few things that you want to make sure your profile has that is a few popular repositories which will essentially be your latest repositories if you don't have any stars on yours and you want to make sure you have a profile a uh, profile picture consistent with that where you have on LinkedIn because if someone is looking to hire you it's likely that they're going to be looking at your LinkedIn profile and your GitHub profile. So make sure that your name is the same. Obviously, it's going to be your name and that your profile pictures are the same. So everything is it, the continuity is there. And then one plus that 
I obviously don't have are having active contributions throughout the past week. So this isn't a deal breaker. If you're looking to apply to a job here tomorrow or next week and you don't have a lot of contributions, this isn't a deal breaker. But if I go to somebody's GitHub page and I see that they've con they contribute like multiple times a day or multiple times a week, that's impressive. Showing contributions and activity, that's always a good thing. Repositories. Now this is what I really wanted to get into other than just a simple profile page stuff. So for now, we're gonna ignore the top three because one, Pizza Topper, that is an Android application that I wrote for one of my computer science classes. It's private. Nobody but me can see that anyway. WebSocket Chat, that was not part of my portfolio. I just put it up here for fun because it was a little project that I worked on at work. And then Open Source CS, that has nothing to do with code. You all saw that in the last video. But everything from to-do list all the way down to Miracle Pills, Whereas you can see I have Swift, I have Java, I have Python projects. And you can see that all of these were updated on January 2nd. And these were all updated February 5th. And then this one lagged a little bit behind on February 9th. There's a reason for that. That is because I had all of these uploaded on GitHub, but I didn't have them what I would consider optimized. And that is having an efficient readme document. So if we come over to Dreamlister, oh, first, if you have a repository name that is something like Dreamlister, like I don't know what the heck a Dreamlister is, like what kind of application is that? You wanna make sure that what it says just below explains what the application does. So this, you're able to create a list of items you dream of having. Self-explanatory when you think about it, but that's very helpful so people know what the actual project is. You'll see that pop up right here. You wanna make sure that your readme file is nice and neat. If you want, you can come in here, you can click on this, and you can copy and paste this if you want. I don't care, this is open source. And use that for your own projects. Use, uh, reuse my readme file. Basically, I just have the name of the application, just like the repository name. And then I have a more detailed version of this. Oops. I explain exactly what the, the thing is. So it's an iOS application where you create a list of items you wish to have one day. You have the ability to upload item information like an image, title, price, description, and store to your dream list. So a little bit of the intricacies of what it does instead of just saying you're able to create a list. And then I like to say what I learned, a little bit more about the project at hand. And for some, I have more than two bullet points. For others, obviously, I just have two bullet points. So I did a lot of core data work entities, attributes, relationships, and then I did fetch and display images and information using the NS fetched results controller. Just to show that I'm familiar with that, I've used it and I'm able to use it again. Same thing will go for back, for any of these other, oh, way too far back, for any of these other pieces of work, so weather app, you will see something similar, you'll just see that I've learned a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit more diverse area. And that is the same for all of these. I use the same template, so it's consistent. So the portfolio is uniform, but it gets a little bit different up here. So for the Sokoban solver, Sudoku solver, these were all for my artificial intelligence course. And instead of having something that explains a little bit of what I learned or, or what it is, this is how to use it. So if you were to clone this, run it, this is how you do it, compile files. So you wanna make sure that you're in the source directory, compile files, and these are the command line arguments and all of the options for each one. And then this is kind of how you go through the input and this is what to expect for the output. That is exactly what I did for all of these. So as you can see, same thing here, this is a run command for this application. This is a run command for the other aspect of the application. And then to-do list, essentially the same. Th oh wait, no, the to-do list is something different. Oh yeah, the to-do list was an Android application for my other class. That's different. These three right here were for my artificial intelligence class. I have one more. I don't know why it's up here. But connect for, same idea, run command and it has all of this. So if you don't have a readme file that adequately explains what your application is, what it does, how to use it and maybe a little bit of what you learned, you're not doing it right. Maybe there's someone out there that does it a little bit better than me, but let me tell you this right here, I'm happy with because anyone can just come up and click on Pokedex iOS application and they're able to see, okay, so this is a Pokedex iOS application that stores all the information for the original Pokemon. If you're familiar with Pokemon, then boom, you're familiar with the Pokedex. But 
what did I learn? So I go over what I learned. I know I'm being repetitive at this point, but I'm trying to drive in my point. That is, make sure you have a readme file that, te that says everything you need it to say. If someone is trying to hire you for something, make sure that this shows that you can do what they need you to do. Make sure you're saying what you can do for them and you're showing what you can do. And don't forget to come over to github.com slash forest night and uh, hit that follow button because for some reason I like to have followers over on GitHub. I have more followers on GitHub than I have on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, link in the description. But on a real note, make sure that you're showing potential employers that you actually know how to do what you say you can do. A lot of a, a common practice is to include your GitHub account. So github.com slash forest night is on my resume. That's because I want people to go to my GitHub account. I want them to see what I'm able to create so they know that I can back up my words with actual code. So in order to recap this video, show off your code so you can actually get a job and make sure you sign up to Skillshare using the link in the top of the description because you can get two months for free. First 500 people, go ahead. And be sure to like the video and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Till next time guys, have a good one, peace.